So time for trees. Gosh, I don't think trees have ever been so high on the agenda, um, but we need to get it right. Um, so I'm not going to elaborate on this slide too much. There are a couple of points I wanted to make before I started. One is that there's a lot of evidence now that shows us the economic and environmental and social values that trees can bring to new developments. And it's worth bearing that in mind when one is trying to um, sell the proposal um, to have trees, perhaps to a reluctant developer. And the other thing that's really important is that on average, about 30% of trees are on public land and 70% of trees are on private land. But if you look, this is the very front cover of the um, design guide uh, code. Here are these trees, um, which are either on the garden of the house on the right or a garden further away. But look at the impact they're having on the quality of the development. So these trees on private land are really delivering public goods for everybody. And we need to think how to look after those and how to actually help, in fact, retain them. So trees and environment, where to begin? Um, I started looking at the model design code and I tried to consider what I didn't think it was covering. Um, and I was really concerned that I didn't see words like microclimate and microclimate based design. I don't know how many of you looked at new developments, but feel that how can the same sort of house be facing north, south, east or west? I mean, is somebody claiming they want a north facing living room or is it actually a rather unconsidered approach to master planning? Where's the role of the trees in building performance? You know, we know that trees can shade. We know the heating is a huge problem. Where's that interface between trees and the actual environment? you know, the microclimate that they can create for people. Climate change, no mention of climate change. It's one of our big challenges. We've all got to get to net zero. Um, surely there's a role here, you know, Sue's told us about the problems of heavy rainfall events. We know we've got to increase urban cooling. We need tra trees for shading places for our children to play in some of these hot summers we've been experiencing. Active travel needs to have shaded walkways, shaded cycleways, children need shaded play space. We may even just want shade to sit outside. So where's that sort of concept covered? And then biodiversity net gain, and this is like to be a planning requirement, 10% I think should be an absolute minimum. But how can design help inform ways of achieving this? Um, and also, how do we know what we've got at the outset? Do we have, is our base information sufficiently good? to demonstrate that we are actually achieving net gain. So I felt those were omissions that should somehow be accommodated. What does the design guide say about trees? So here's our little diagram and we've got some street trees with, as Sue said, all the sort of various elements that go with trees. I don't think the trees are actually integrated with the um, suds there though, but and I think that's something we should take up. Page 30 says that all new streets should include trees, street trees. I'm not sure how realistic that is, um, but equally, it would be worth highlighting the benefits of having trees, their ability to store carbon, sequester carbon, remove pollution, help with rainfall interception, you know, all these kind of things. But equally, um, there's a little encouragement because I see a tree has been allowed to replace what might have been some car parking area. And maybe that's the beginning of sort of, you know, taking space for other uses than, than just cars. And I think it was in the design code that he said, you know, how do we actually encourage less dependence on private cars? I did eventually, thanks to somebody on the call, find street trees extract C note N33. Um, it, I didn't find it immediately and somebody pointed it out to me. It didn't actually say very much about street trees and design principles, so I don't think we should count on that. <laughs> Page 24, some issues of concern. It's sort of one of the problems when you show little diagrams without thinking what necessarily what they're actually demonstrating. So if you go down to the secondary streets, you're starting to actually see some, some what we'd call street canyons. And there's one street here in the middle where they've actually got the canopies meeting, but there's a car underneath and people who know about air quality will know there's a huge amount of concern um, about emissions from vehicles and trapping pollution. So all new streets should include trees on page 30. Whoops, that's slipped, hasn't it? 
So, um, however, help is at hand. If you go to TEDx Trees and Hard Landscapes, it will actually show you how to overcome some of these problems and actually find practical solutions. But the other things in the guide, again, where the drawing has opened <clears throat> a question but hasn't actually mentioned it as hasn't seen it as a problem. So here we've got a tree on a street near a house. <clears throat> well, what's the underlying ge geology? Is it a shrinkable soil? What's the dangers of um, subsidence? All new dwellings on low rise and low rise buildings on shrinkable soils should have resilient foundations that can accommodate trees and reduce the use of concrete, of course. But this means that building regs approved document A needs to be updated, um, NHBC 4 point, chapter 4.2 needs to be revised, insurance companies need to stop asking you in the small print whether you've got a tree within X meters of your house. So it's no use showing a little diagram about what could be done when actually underneath that is a whole series of things that need to happen if it is to be done. Um, and shockingly, there was no mention of all the trees and design action group work, which I'm going to actually highlight because so many of your members and a lot of you volunteer your time to help produce these guides and they really do answer off to the questions that the um, model design code failed. Um, encouraging images, page 31. So when people are talking about street trees, let's get out of our minds the idea that you have to have serried ranks of pairs of trees just marching along the street. I mean, there are many, many ways in which you can integrate and in, introduce trees into streets without having to simply line them with trees. You can do alternate planning. You can do um, highlight crossing places. You can make landmark links. I mean, it's it's not just let's get over out of our minds that we're just going to have rows of trees in streets. And when you come to look at designing with trees, you've got to ask yourself some real questions. What are you trying to do here? What's the purpose of planting the trees? Um, what's the brief? What are the benefits you're trying to achieve? Where's it going? That will influence the way in which you plant them. If they're in a very hard urban landscape, you will have to plant them very differently to if they're in a grass verge with adjacent open, um, front gardens, which give more opportunities for tree roots. How you get, will, will the trees be adopted? If they're in streets, a highway authority is going to adopt them. There's a resistance to do that, but you know, that's why we have to bring the highway authorities along with others. What's the long-term management and maintenance plan? And what's the level of investment? Do we understand the level of investment needed? Because when we talk about planting trees, we all, we actually need to mean planting plus five or 10 years until the tree is established as being independent in the landscape as part of that initial capital expenditure and investment. How can planning support tree planting? The England tree strategy must be enshrined in law. At one point, a couple of years ago, we nearly achieved that, but number 10 pushed us back apparently. All local authorities must have tree strategies and they must be embedded in their local plans and be legally binding. And tree strategies must not be confused with green infrastructure strategies or be a subset of them. Trees are very long lived, they're often transgenerational. Green infrastructure actually can come and go. The green roof on a building is there for the life of the building. While we're trying to save buildings as much as we can, we can't always guarantee that they'll be there. Retaining existing trees must be a first priority. Existing trees bring huge values to development sites. So they actually should, there should be real effort in design to ensure that existing trees are retained and similarly, because those sites are benefiting from the trees that already exist that some previous generation planted, you know, we've got to be bold and generous and plant them in our time for future generations. Um, tree replacement policy must be included in a tree strategy. And please understand it is not take out a tree, plant a tree. If you take away, say, a 60 year old beech tree um, to deliver the same services and amenity value, you probably need to plant seven Norway maples. I don't use that because it's my tree of choice. It just happens to be the one we have figures for against the ecosystem services delivered. And local authorities for their public estates must have tree management plans. 
So what would I like to see in this model design guide? I'm, I'd like to see the ambition if we're going to be talking about trees for all the things they can do for us. I really would like to see the whole ambition kind of raised. And I think people have covered those things. But um, I think um, there's, there's so many things that could be done for trees that actually benefit placemaking. That this need, you know, we really need to work out how to effectively design with trees and ensure they deliver the benefits they can. And I think that's enough about trees. Thank you, Sue. I, I don't think we can, there's never, it's never enough about trees. <laughs> They're so important and crucial for our environments. And, um, you know, you, you've highlighted the very important point again that came up in our first event as well, that it's not just the code, it's all the other regulations um, down to the, the, the mortgage, mortgage applications that need to kind of follow suit, really, so we can actually deliver the vision and the objectives set out.